Hello, class. Our fourth president that we're going to talk about is James Madison. So James Madison is our shortest president. He was 5'4". James Madison was, was born on March 16th, 1751. He's actually James Madison Jr. His father was James Madison Sr. However, he eclipsed his father so significantly that no one ever calls him Jr. He's going to die June 28th, 1836. His home state is Virginia. Four of the first five U.S. presidents are slaveholding men from Virginia. James Madison is not the exception. His religion is Episcopalian, which is what the Church of England became after the Revolution. So, James Madison was very good at writing. He's a real academic. Took fantastic notes to the Constitutional Convention. However, when it came to social situations, he was no good. He would have a very hard time as a socially awkward, shy, five foot four presidential candidate today in our televised world. Now, what helped on policies at that point was his wife, Dolly. Now, Dolly Madison. Dolly Madison was very extroverted, whereas James Madison was very introverted. And they complimented each other in this way. So when we had to go to parties, she loved parties. She could talk for him. Okay? Um, she could host parties. It all worked out. His party is the Democratic Republican Party. In the Jefferson video, I went into detail about how it's kind of a made-up historian name. Um, but he would have called himself a Republican. But that has nothing to do with the Republican Party today. Um... But that was the dominant party at the time. His time in office is March 4th, 1809 to March 4th, 1817. He served two full terms, and then he followed the precedent set by George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. There was nothing in the Constitution that prevented him from running for a third term. So when it comes to vice presidents, James Madison had some rough luck. So for Thomas Jefferson, his first vice president had been Aaron Burr, and then they didn't get along. So his second president, his second vice president, was the governor of New York, George Clinton. Well, Clinton stayed on as the running mate for James Madison after Thomas Jefferson didn't go for a third term. Well, George Clinton died in 1812 near the end of James Madison's first term. So, he picked a new running mate, Elbridge Jerry, another governor from New York. He is best known today from the term gerrymander because he divided up his state to try to help himself politically. Um, and Elbridge Jerry is going to also die in office. So James Madison is going to have about half his presidency with no vice president and both governors of New York. Bad luck there. So James Madison, really, what he gave to us is not his presidency. It's what he did before. He's the father of the Constitution, specifically with the Bill of Rights. He wrote the first 10 amendments to the U.S. Constitution that we call the Bill of Rights. These bedrock freedoms, okay? Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, okay? The Second Amendment, you can thank James Madison. If you don't have to testify against yourself in court, the Fifth Amendment, you can thank James Madison. If there are soldiers that are not quartering in your house, you can thank James Madison. Okay, he made the whole bill guns. And he was a big proponent for the Constitution. Okay, he 
co-wrote the Federalist Papers with John Jay and Alexander Hamilton. Now, he was, before he's president, he's Secretary of State. So today, the vice presidency is seen as more of a stepping stone to being president. But at this point, it was the Secretary of State because the president actually chose them. So you're going to have Thomas Jefferson. He was a Secretary of State. He became president. James Madison, Secretary of State. He's going to become president. James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, all Secretary of States. Okay. And then during his presidency, what's going to really be the thing that, that identifies the whole thing is the War of 1812, where we get into a war with Great Britain again. And the War of 1812 has a fight between the United States and Great Britain is essentially a tie. Okay. Um, the issues of impressment from the British are not really resolved. There's no big land changes. And both sides can really sell it as a victory. Um, and that's going to essentially lead to the collapse of his main political rivals, the Federalist, who had labeled it Mr. Madison's War. Now, the most embarrassing aspect of the war is when the British set fire to Washington, D.C., specifically the White House, and James Madison had to evacuate it. Um, and so he chooses to not run for a third term, even though he most certainly could have won that term, and um, lived out the rest of his life as an elder statesman. So James Madison's contributions are probably bigger from before he was president, but he is still an important president. And next time we will talk about his successor, James Monroe.